So I have a few disclaimers before we start today's video. Disclaimer number one, there is a really big water park that's sitting behind me out here. People are very excited to be on these water slides today. I mean, extraordinarily excited. And I'm excited for them because it does sound pretty fun to be on a water slide because it is like the Gobi Desert out here right now. But I just wanna let you know that if you hear people screaming in the background, it's because they're enjoying this really big, fast water slide, not because they're excited to watch me demonstrate to you on how to transition onto your lead side. Disclaimer number two, after you make a really strong transition move onto your lead side, it's what you do with that movement that really matters the most, right? You have to be able to post up and release the golf club properly, which I got some exciting news for you that I'm going to be releasing a video next week on that very topic, talking about how to stabilize your pelvis and how to really make sure that you have a good solid platform for you to be able to deliver the club from. As we looked at the Jason Day video earlier in the week, we talked about the key move that he makes to get back over onto his lead side and how good his impact position looks as a result of it. So I wanna teach you that you need to do and what you should be feeling in your own golf swings so that in turn, you can start going out there and making some magic happen for yourself. So let's go ahead and get into it now. First thing I want you to do is we're gonna step out of the binds of golf swings and we're gonna step out of your comfort zone here for a little bit and we're just gonna work on getting our upper body to move along with our lower body. So in order to do this, what I want you to do is I want you to stand up 100% vertically. I want you to be in proper stance width and I want you to go ahead and move 99.99% of your weight over underneath your trail ankle, 99.99%. So all of your weight over underneath your trail ankle. Now what I want you to do is I want you to take your lead foot, see how it's kind of cantered in here? My instep is kind of rolled in on the ground. I want you to take your lead foot and I want you to pull your entire body over to your lead side. So now you have 99.999% of your weight underneath your lead ankle. So if you focus on where the weight is moving to, that's going to be extremely helpful when we get to the next piece here. And I'll explain to you why here in just a moment. So all I want you to be able to do is just this movement back and forth. So pull your weight from one side of the body to the other, allowing your head and your chest to move along with it. Pretty simple, right? The reason why I want you to do such a big movement right now is because most of you at home are afraid to move in the golf swing because you've been taught for way too freaking long that you need to stay in the barrel and you need to not shift. Under no circumstance am I gonna teach you how to sway or how to slide. This is gonna be toned down here in just a moment, but I do wanna teach you how to create some movement and how to allow your head and your chest to move along with your legs because so many amateur golfers like to just do this number. And that's gonna run you into reverse pivot territory and it's gonna make your golf swing, it's gonna make your body hurt and it's gonna make your golf swing lack efficiency, which we're here to make the golf club go fast and make the golf ball go far. So you have to use weight shift, got it? So after you've done this, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna make this a whole lot more realistic. And what I want you to do is I want you to grab a golf ball or put a piece of tape on the ground or grab your favorite fuzzy slipper and put it down. And this is going to be where your ball position is going to be when you work on this drill. I want the ball position to where if you draw a straight line up from the back of the golf ball, it hits you right in the lead side of your temple. So you wanna have your temple in line with the back of the golf ball. And I want you to go ahead and get yourself in golf posture. And I want you to cross your arms over your shoulders. I want you to be 50-50 at address. And the first thing that I want you to do is I want you to push your trail ankle into the ground slightly. So you're going to feel about 70% of your weight move underneath your trail ankle. Now when, I, when I'm doing this, what do you notice about my head? Well, Chris, it's moving a little bit, right? So once you pressure shift onto that right ankle, I just want you to pull your right shoulder back behind your head. The most you should be off the golf ball is about an inch and a half to two inches. If you notice that your head gets way outside your trail foot, there's a pretty good chance that you're just turning too flat with your shoulders, okay? You need to think about getting your trail shoulder to move more up and behind your head. So after you make that little pressure shift, you're gonna pull that trail shoulder up behind your head. So what you'll notice is, is that when you transfer your weight over to your trail side, you push 70% down and then you turn your body, you're now gonna feel about 80 to 85% of your weight underneath this right ankle. By turning your body into that side, you're increasing the pressure. That's how you're starting to give yourself some muscle tension that you can start moving off of. From this particular position, what we need to do is we now need to transfer 80 to 85% of our weight over underneath our lead ankle. I want you to think about where the weight is moving to because this right here is going to help your hips move very dynamically. What I mean is this, if you're weight goes to the forward part of the foot in your downswing. If you transfer 80 to 85% of your weight and it goes to the ball of your foot or it goes towards your toes, you're going to be doing what we call a closed hip slide. What that looks like from a down the line perspective is that when you turn here and then your weight goes forward, notice how my hips are staying closed. So just by focusing on where the weight moves to in your feet, by focusing on it moving towards the ankle, it's forcing your hips 
to actually start opening back up. So without having to think about how much your hips are turning or how much your hips are shifting, we simplify that by just thinking about where the pressure moves through your feet. Pretty awesome now. In order to get that 80 to 85% number of your weight shift onto that side, you're going to have to allow your head to move back into position or slightly in front of where it was at a dress. What I try to get people to feel is that that temple, when it moves off the ball, is gonna now move all the way back to the golf ball or maybe to the middle of the ball. For those of you that really battle with weight shift issues, I may want you to even try to feel like your temple gets slightly in front of it. Don't worry, it's much easier for us to be able to tone this stuff back as you get rocking and rolling rather than trying to chip away and get more and more shift in there. I always tell amateur golfers, when it comes to transferring your weight onto your lead side, try to overcook it at first because that's the number one thing that you guys tend to lack. You get really rotational and just not enough lateral movement in the swing. When we do this movement from our trail side over to our lead side, we're gonna focus on getting 80% of our weight over underneath our lead ankle and we're going to try to get our head all the way back into its original position. Now here's the fun one. I want you to think about sitting down onto that lead ankle ever so slightly. Why would I want you to do that? If you watch any really good ball striker, what you actually see in their swing is you'll see their body turn, their head stays fairly level, their head will drop slightly in transition and then it stays down all the way through the release. That's right, spine angle actually increases ever so slightly in transition. Most of you don't do this movement in the golf swing because you drive so hard off of your trail side that it brings your hips forward and stands you up and out of posture. Now, I'm not teaching you today on how many degrees I want you to increase your spine angle in transition. What I'm teaching you here is just making things very subtle and very simple. We're thinking about making a little downward movement onto that lead ankle in transition to get 85% of our weight into that side. To do that, you're just gonna think about sitting down onto the left ankle and allowing your head to come fully back into position. Okay, so let's get ourselves set up here. So my lead temple is in line with the back of the golf ball. We're gonna pressure shift by pushing 70% down into our right ankle and then we're gonna turn. Now we're gonna sit down and allow my head to come back. You can see that it's slightly in front of where it was at a dress. So now it's like kind of at the front of the golf ball here. Back, down. Now I'm focusing on the weight driving down through that lead ankle. If you focus on the weight moving through the ankle, your hips are going to move very dynamically. You're now set up for success. We have now reached that portion of the video that a lot of you have been waiting for and probably have all skipped ahead of those first two sections just to get to the point where you can bring the golf club back in your hands and you can start hitting golf balls. I don't blame you, this is the fun part. So listen, any really good golf instructor can take your golf swing and make it look pretty good on camera in a matter of seconds. That doesn't mean that you own that movement. It's how you practice this stuff. So hopefully you go through these steps that I laid out for you in the first half of the video before you start getting out the golf club and getting out the golf ball. Because you need time to be able to rehearse the correct movements, but then you need to be able to start blending all of this stuff together and then start moving it into athleticism. Everything we do at My Golf DNA, whether it's on our website or on the channel, we start out generally without the golf club just because we need to create some awareness, but we need to turn that awareness into movement as quickly as we possibly can so that you can start setting yourself up for success. I'm not about just making golf swings look good. I'm out about making changes. Making changes is what you're here for so that you can ultimately do what? Play better golf. Let's talk about what we're gonna do to get the golf club back in our hands. When we do this, our goal is just to focus on the movement, what we're trying to achieve. We're not gonna make big, long swings at first, but we are gonna do it a little bit choppy, and then we're gonna start moving into movement, where we start trying to blend it together and making a full swing. I want you to focus on this two different ways. The downward pressure of 85% onto your lead ankle and your head moving back into position before you feel the hands and arms go whipping past your body. Downward pressure, 85%, and your head moving back into its original position or even trying to get it slightly in front of where it was at address. We're gonna take our setup, we're gonna get the ball position lined up off of our lead temple, and we're gonna make a little pressure shift and turn. Now from here, downward pressure, head comes back into position. You hear the kids screaming? They're having a great time on the slide. It sounds like a lot of fun. Let's do another rep. Downward pressure, head moving back into position. Focus on where the weight moves through. Downward pressure, head moves back into position. What I want you to do now that you've got these sensations going in your brain, you're feeling a little bit more sharp with it, we're gonna start making some swings. Let's go at about 80% of our normal speed here. Downward pressure. Okay, make sure my head moves back into position. As you can see, I'm not making a ton of downward movement. I'm just trying to feel downward pressure, focusing on it going through my lead ankle, and getting my head position all the way back to where it was. Okay, that was felt pretty good there. Let's go ahead and hit a shot. So 
as you can see, I'm kind of rehearsing it in my brain, visualizing it, trying to feel it. That was pretty good there. So as you can see, the way that I'm practicing it is I'm taking my time. I have the visuals of what it looks like to me, like if I'm standing where you guys are at home, looking to see that kind of downward pressure, turning it into a feel. Then I'm starting to increase the number of reps, then I'm putting some fluidity to it, and then I'm hitting a shot. I'm going to repeat this process for my entire session. Now, if you follow this protocol and you do things this way, what you can start doing is as you get to the tail end of your session, you can start eliminating the many, many practice swings and start hitting more and more golf balls. Okay, so listen, I know that there's probably about 3,000 ways to teach the transition move in the golf swing. In fact, I've heard a lot of different ways and there's a lot of great ways to do it. What I'm trying to do for you is I'm just trying to simplify the process by breaking it down into a couple of little focus points. Get out there, try it. Let's have some fun with it, and I'll see you all in next week's video when we start talking about the post-up and the release, which is a really fun one. So hopefully you guys will join us. Like I said before, if you have not yet subscribed to the channel, please do so. We've got a lot of really great content that's getting ready to come out. Click that like button for me below. Let's get out there. Let's start playing some good golf. I'm gonna go hit the water slide. Make it a great day.